In section 1.4.4, we'll be looking at properties of the cross product. So let's say I have three vectors, u, v, and w in R3, and I have a real number k. Um, first property of the cross product, which we've seen already, is if you want to switch uh, the order, you're going to have to put a minus. So w cross v is minus v cross w, and that's called anti-commutativity. Now, I can distribute the cross product on both sides, so that's the same as what we've seen before. I can multiply it into a sum of vectors, like this. Same from the other side, so u cross w plus v cross w. Um, I can move a scalar around, just like we could with the dot product, so I could put it with the first vector, or I could put it with the second, sorry. No problem. Um, if I multiply by the zero vector, I get the zero vector back. Careful, not zero, the zero vector. The cross product gives us a vector. Um, parallel vectors, if the v is parallel to w, then the cross product is zero and vice versa. That's what we just saw in the last corollary. Um, let me add something here. This is an important example that we'll use in a second, so please write it down. In particular, if you take v cross v for any vector v, you always get zero. v is parallel to itself. And so here's one specific example of that, which is important. Um, we've looked at perpendicularity as well. V cross W is always perpendicular to V and always perpendicular to both. And again, let me add um, one way we looked at this that we'll use in a second. If you take the dot product, you'll get zero whether you're taking the dot product with V or with W, you will get zero. This time it is the zero number because I'm following a cross product with the dot product. So the end result of the dot product, the last operation would be a number, so we're getting a number. Um, just a little note, often it feels like all that you would want is true, and just to show you that it isn't, um, I put on the exercise sheet one example of computing these two sides, right? You could take the cross product of v cross w first and then u, or you could take u cross v and then cross it with w. This will give you two different factors. So in particular, um, if I write something like this, this doesn't exist, right? You can only get rid of the parentheses if you know it's associative. So however you put uh, the parentheses, whichever cross product you do first, it's the same thing. This makes no sense. We don't know which one of the two you would mean. And so let me erase it. All right, let's do this example. I am not given V and W, but I'm given their cross product. So the cross product is 1, 5, minus 1. I cannot get V and W from this information. That's very little. But I'm asked to evaluate 2V plus 4W. So let's try that. Plus 4W, and I want to take that vector and cross it with W. All right, so first thing I should do is distribute. So I'm going to use distribution. That's the second property. So by the second property, I can take 2v cross w plus 4w cross w. And then we've also seen that you can move uh, the constants around. So you'll get 2 uh, times v cross w plus 4 w cross w, and that's, like I noted, is using um, this property, which is called associativity with scalar multiplication. The k can be moved in and out of the vectors. So the first of these vectors, this v cross w, I'm given 
a value for it, so I'll just place it in. I'm not given anything for w cross w, and so that's when I'm going to use property 5. In particular, that example of if I take the cross product of a vector with itself, I get the 0 vector. So this part will give me 0, and so I'll get 2 times 1, 5, minus 1, plus 4 times the 0 vector. And this here is by property 5, since w is perpendicular, uh, is parallel, sorry, w is parallel to w, I get the 0 vector, so all in all, I end up with 2, 10, minus 2.